The goal of the game of Herdvana is to collect herds of animals that add up to the most points. The game begins by shuffling all of the cards. You might have to get a little creative because there are a lot of them. But when you finish that task, deal each player six cards. Place the rest of the cards in the middle of the table as the draw pile and flip over the top card to start the discard pile next to it. Once you decide who goes first, the game can begin. On a player's turn, they can perform one of six actions. All of the actions are listed on this card and we'll be going through them as they come up. Once a player has taken their action, they draw until they have six cards in their hand again and it's the next player's turn. So to get things rolling, let's look at the first action on the list. To begin a herd, you must have two or more matching animal cards in your hand. Alien and farmer cards don't count. You lay them down on the table in the area in front of you, or your field. While a herd is in your field, you can add more cards of that animal from your hand to make it grow. But be careful, it might not be as safe as you think. If you don't have any matches in your hand, you can try to make one with the top card of the discard pile. Either take it to make a herd from your hand, or play it on a herd in your field. Sometimes you hit a rough patch though and can't make a herd of your own. That's okay, you can always steal someone else's. If you have a card that matches a herd in another player's field, you can play it, challenging them to go on the defense. If your opponent has a matching card in their hand, they can defend by playing it too, but the battle isn't over. If you have another matching card, you can play it, and so on until one player concedes defeat and the victor gets the herd, adding the cards used in the battle to the herd itself. Nice. To try and stop this from happening, a player might use their action to play a single farmer card on the herd. This protects the herd from any would-be thieves, but it also means that no other animal cards may be played on this herd. You may start another herd with the same animal, but be aware that this herd will remain its own herd and cannot be combined with another herd later, which might not be ideal for the reasons we will talk about later. I should also mention that you can play more than one farmer on the same herd, but you can only play one per action. So what about aliens? Aliens are how you get rid of farmer cards. You choose which farmer you want to abduct, then place both the alien and the farmer on top of the discard pile. You can only abduct one farmer at a time though, so if there are multiple farmers protecting a herd, it will take a while if you're looking to make a steal in the future. The final action available to a player is if they cannot or choose not to do any of the other actions, they need to discard a card from their hand. Kind of anticlimactic on a final option, but there you go. So that's the list of actions a player can take on their turn, now let's take a look at chameleon cards. These cards are your wild cards. They can be added to any herd to tack on a few more points. They can also be used when stealing or defending a herd. There aren't many of them in the deck though, so use them wisely. Speaking of numbers of cards, each animal, except the chameleon, has eight matching cards. If you manage to collect all eight in a single herd, it's known as achieving herdvana. This not only gives you a 10 point bonus, but it also means that this herd is complete and cannot be stolen or played in any way. No farmers, no chameleons, it's locked. Two things to note. Chameleons don't count towards the number of eight matching cards. They can be in the herd, but there must be all eight of the herd's main animal for it to achieve Herdvana. Secondly, if Herdvana is achieved during a challenge, it doesn't take effect until the challenge is complete. If the next player has a chameleon, they can still win the herd before it gets locked down. Once the draw pile runs out of cards, the game ends and the player with the most points wins. All right, so Herdvana. It's a pretty decent game. I don't have a lot to say in its uh, con realm, uh, but uh, yeah, I think the system is simple enough to learn very quickly and it's very casual, the art is great, I enjoy it a lot. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's pretty much the pros I have for it. It's not hard, it's beautiful, and I enjoy it. Cons wise, I think there might be a few too many animals, uh, because it's really hard to get a match sometimes. You have a very broad selection, and uh, I often have a handful of aliens and farmers, and no matches, and that's kind of annoying, uh, but uh, that's that might be the RNG. Uh, 
Like I said before, there's a lot of cards to shuffle in this game, and that can make things a little uh, difficult to get it really random. I did the standard washing or scrubbing method, which is supposed to be like the best way to make sure that it's all random. And I still got a whole bunch of clumps and clusters. I didn't see bison until the very end of one of the games, and I was like, okay, well, interesting that they all clump there. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of cards, and it's really hard to shuffle. The I'm nitpicking. This is a good game. Go check it out. And until next time, this is Hogwash, over and out. Catch you later.